Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Nick here again, and uh, we are continuing uh, in these one-year Bible devotionals. And uh, today we're looking at Matthew 26, 14 to 68. Uh, in verses 14 to 16, we see that Judas receives 30 pieces of silver and begins to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Uh, I, I found that very interesting that it says that there, that he looked for opportunity. So now he's watching Jesus and uh, waiting for the chance to betray him. In verses 17 to 25, uh, they go into the upper room. And Jesus announced that someone was going to betray him. Uh, they all ask him, is it I? And when Judas asks him, Judas says, is it I? Jesus essentially says, yes. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew does not mention Judas leaving here. But the other Gospels mention that it is at this point in time that Judas gets up and leaves. And then in verses 26 to 30, we find the institution of the Lord's Supper. Uh, we find this memorial of what Jesus did. That's what, when we take the Lord's Supper, it is a memorial. It is remembering what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. Paul says that. He says, as oft as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Um, so then we see, secondly, uh, not only is it a memorial of what he did, but it's also looking forward to what he will do. Jesus says here in Matthew 26, he says, uh, henceforth, I will not or, or I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. And so that that gives us something to look forward to in the future uh, that we will see Jesus face to face and we will actually take this with him in person. Uh, and then finally, it says after that, that they sung a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. And that's where you find in verses 31 to 35, uh, Jesus tells Peter that he is going to deny him three times. Uh, Peter argues. Peter says, I will never deny you. I'll go with you to death. Right. And Jesus tells him, no, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Um, in verses 36 to 46, uh, Jesus prays in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he prays three times and, uh, he prays to the father and asks if there's, uh, any other way, uh, he says, let this cup pass from me, but he says, thy will be done. And, uh, what's interesting here is that while he's praying, he asks his disciples to watch um, but each time he returns to them, they're asleep. Um, and it's very interesting because the other day we saw how many times Jesus said to be ready. If you remember that and here the disciples were sleeping and we have to ask ourselves the question, how many of the Lord's followers are spiritually asleep today when we should be watching? Uh, in verses 47 to 56, uh, they come to the garden to get Jesus and Judas gives him a kiss on the cheek uh, to show them which one it was. And uh, one of the disciples grabs a sword and cuts off one of the guards ears. Uh, we know because of the other gospels that this disciple was Peter. We know that this guard, his name was Malchus. Uh, we also know that Jesus picks the ear up and puts it back on. Um, and says, you know, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Uh, in verses 57 to 68, we find them taking Jesus before the high priest. Uh, they had already made up their mind that they wanted to kill him. So it didn't matter how this went down or transpired. They had already made up their mind that they were going to kill him. Uh, now they were just going through the motions to make that happen. And uh, we can see how they treat him. And uh, this is the son of God. This is the creator of the universe. And yet we see how they treat him. They hated him. And so what stood out to me there is that Jesus knew the whole, whole time he was going to the cross. Uh, remember that uh, he was always in control. He never lost control. He always knew he was going to the cross. And yet he went willingly anyway. At this time, we're going to look at Psalm 31, 19 through 32, verse 11. Uh, in verses 19 to 24 of Psalm 31, he writes about God's abundant goodness. 
God's people should love him and wait upon him because he will not fail. Uh, in Psalm 32, we find a psalm that God is a forgiving God. Um, David writes in verses 1 to 2 that the individual who has their sins forgiven is blessed. Blessed is the man who has his sins forgiven. In verses 3 and 4, we see that silence uh, did not help them. Uh, we see in, in verses 5 that he writes that confession equals forgiveness, that when we confess that God will forgive us. We need to remember that. Uh, you find a parallel passage in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so if we confess, God will forgive. Uh, in uh, verse number 11, we find that we should rejoice because our sins are forgiven. So confession equals forgiveness. And then the result of that should be rejoicing uh, because we have been forgiven. At this time, we're going to look at Proverbs 8, verse 14 through 32. Uh, in these verses, we see two things. Uh, the first thing is that God formed and fashioned everything. He puts the mountains into place and told the sea where to stop. Uh, and secondly, he did it all by his wisdom. Wisdom is from before the foundation of the world and will remain after the world is gone. And so again, we should seek after this wisdom. Why? Because it, it is of ancient time from before the world began and it will last into eternity. And so seek wisdom, pursue it. Uh, because it will greatly bless us. Let's bow our heads. Our wonderful God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. God, we just pray that you would give us your wisdom. And Father, help us as we continue to study your word and we continue to live for you, that we would be busy about your kingdom work. And Father, that we would uh, just implant the gospel into those around us. And Father, that we would water where other people have planted and we would see you give the increase. It's in Jesus' name we pray.